bringing you key insights, tips, and advice from the brightest minds in the Canadian franchise industry. This is the Franchise Canada Chats Podcast. Welcome to the Franchise Canada Chats Podcast, where we take you into the world of franchising. Our interviews are with franchisees, franchisors, and industry leaders who give on the pulse expert advice and share their franchising insights and experiences. I'm your host, Lauren. This is the last of three episodes in season 2.5, which is our special bonus season as we prepare for the launch of season three this fall. In this episode, we feature keynote speaker and author Todd Cohen, who shares strategies for staying present and profitable working virtually. Virtual work is a temporary new normal as a result of COVID-19 and has created new challenges for many businesses when it comes to reaching their clients. Here, Todd takes us through some thoughtful ideas for how to stay present and profitable in this unprecedented time. He shares his passion on the power of being virtually present to sell ourselves more effectively and make no mistake, this message is more important than ever because it's not your client's job to remember you. This episode was adapted from Todd's Staying Present and Profitable Working Virtually keynote session as part of the Canadian Franchise Association's Navigating Through Turbulent Times webinar series in early April. You can learn more at cfa.ca. Enjoy the episode. I am delighted to be here and I am thrilled to share this information with you because this is so important right now. This notion of staying present and profitable while working virtually. I got to tell you, what we know, ladies and gentlemen, is that this isn't normal. This is not the way we're used to working. I don't know about you, but I like being around people. I mean, I'm a speaker. I, you know, obviously I, you might think, well, no kidding. But I don't know anybody who really wants to be cooped up in their house for three months or four months. And I know I certainly don't. It's me, my lovely wife, and my dog, Luna. I just hope uh, the three of us are still standing when this is all over. That being said, let's talk about your business. Let's talk about the fact that right now, ladies and gentlemen, what we have to do as franchisees and franchisors and business owners, it doesn't matter is we have to leverage a set of skills that frankly, up until this point, we haven't really had to think a lot about, or we've been doing them without thinking about it. And this is this idea of being present. I have now spoken to more people who have said to me, you know what, I kind of like this. I don't ever want to go back. And I, all I could think of is if you have that attitude, what's going to happen is your relationships are going to take a giant hit. And that's really at the core of what we're talking about here, folks. So when we talk about this notion of being present and profitable when working virtually, when some of you might have heard my keynote on presence at the UPS uh, Canada Stores Convention this past, I believe it was May, and I talked a lot about how presence is one of the strongest tools that we have in our bag, one of our strongest selling tools that we have in our bag, because people make a buying decision on you before you ever say a word. Now, remember that I said that people are making a buying decision on you before you ever say a word. That's assuming that you're seeing them face to face. Now we have to work harder at this to maintain what is simply the equal level of presence and presence equals sales and sales equals profitability. And folks, I got to tell you, if there was ever anything that I think is as important to this, as important as this, I don't know what it is because if we're still interacting with people, we've got to work overtime to make sure they know that we're there with them. And it's not about you. It's about them. And remember that I said that. Now, when this is over, my belief passionately is that there's going to be basically two kinds of individuals, just two left standing. And those of you who know me know that I tend to be very sort of black and white on these things, right? Sure, there's a lot of variables, but for the purposes of this particular virtual keynote, I'd like to talk about the two types of people that will be left standing. The one will be those with active and rich relationships because they've done things now that makes that that ensures that down the road your relationships are still there. And you know what? There are going to be those folks, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, who will some <coughs> pardon me, who will somehow let complacency seep in and kill relationships. And I have to tell you, this happens before we ever even see it coming. I've seen it over and over again 
I've been guilty of it at various points in my career. Complacency lulls us into a, into a bad place, right? Complacency is not a good thing. And when we're working virtually, we're working at home, when we're depending on electronic communications like this to keep things moving, it's so easy and sometimes you don't see that complacency creeping up on you. You have children, you have a dog, you have spouses, everybody's crammed into one house. It's real easy to get distracted and write this down if you would please, distraction equals complacency. They can really work hand in hand. So what we have to make sure is that when this is over, we actually have clients to turn back to. And if right now you're saying, oh yeah, that makes sense, you get it. If you're saying or thinking, you know what, my clients are pretty solid, they'll be fine, listen up, because nothing is guaranteed. And while that may sound like, how could anybody actually say that, you would be stunned at the number of people I've spoken to over the last three weeks in, in venues exactly like this, where people have said, you know what, I'm not worried about my clients, we're the only game in town, or I'm not worried about my clients because you know, going into this, we had a good relationship. Well, you know what? Had is the operative word there. Let's make sure that we're doing everything now to make sure that we have somebody to turn to. You know what the first rule on that is? It's not about you. This crisis, their business, their ills, the things that are keeping them down, it's not about you, it's about them. That's also the first rule of networking, and what many would argue that's the first rule of relationship building. Folks, it's not about you, it's about them, and then it will come back to you. We all know that relationships, when we invest in them, it's a boomerang effect. Now we have to work 300% harder to make sure that we have those relationships when this crisis is over, and this crisis will end. In fact, I don't know about you, but when it's done, I never want to do another Zoom call as long as I live. But on that note, this is what I want you to write down. I'm going to ask you to write things down throughout this presentation, friends, because there are some nuggets here that can make a substantive change to the way you are approaching how you're engaging and interacting with people. Folks, bottom line, it's not your customer's job to remember you. It's not their job to keep you top of mind. And I want to give a shout out to Lou Gervaisi at uh, CFA for remembering this statement and posting something on LinkedIn that was in response to something I posted. And you know what? If there's anything we should remember, it's this. It's not your customer's job to remember you. And if you think it is, then you're complacent and you'll have nothing to come back to. So if you're a business owner or if you're influencing business owners or whatever position you have, and you're listening in, I want you to write this down. I want you to stick it somewhere where you can look at it every day. Go to your staff tomorrow morning and say, folks, number one rule, our customer's number one job is not to remember us. It's our job to remember them. And that's why presence is so massively important because if we're not careful, we know this relationships can fade fast. We've all heard the saying, out of sight, out of mind. Well, if your clients can actually see you, you can fill in the rest of that sentence. You know what? If they can see you, then they can experience you and they can experience the fact that you're there with them. Presence is the selling tool that starts and ends before you even say a word. So moving forward here a little bit, complacency kills. Now, I've said this in my sales culture keynotes for years. And as a sales guy starting in the 80s when I was an embryo, for, the, for Xerox, I will tell you that we learned this early on. If you get complacent, you get replaced. This is why we have to work three, four, 500% harder to maintain presence. This is why we can never forget that we need to make sure that our customers, we remember them first. The, our responsibility, their responsibility is not to remember us. I'd like you to write this down if you would as well. Those who, those who are present achieve permanence. What you do now puts another brick in the wall of you being a permanent presence in their world. What you do now, the investments you make and how present you are will have a direct impact and a profound impact on your profitability. So here's another way of looking at that. Don't wait for this crisis to be over. 
don't wait and assume that everything is going to come back at a certain pace or a certain speed. The, 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 the recovery, the comeback starts now, starts today. And the investments you make achieve, make you, help you achieve permanence down the road. This is a big deal. Look, folks, we have one goal here, and that's to stay connected. When you're connected, you have relationships. When you're present, you start making more money. So here we go. Let's practice being present when working virtually. Let's practice being present when working virtually. So what I'm going to share with you right now are eight-ish guaranteed ways to be present and stay present. Be present and stay present. And the reason why I say eight-ish, well, every time I do this, I think of another one. What I didn't want to do was just convert my existing keynote on presence to this format because I think this format, when we're engaging, means it requires some modifications, some things to do differently. You'll see some things similar, but you'll see some new things here as well. The first one is to remember, is to remember that mindset is everything. When you get up in the morning and you sit down or you stand up, I happen to be standing at my desk. I bought myself one of these Vera desks, things that stand up and I walk around because as a speaker, I want to put myself in my most comfortable venue. What's your most comfortable venue? Make sure you know what that is because that will impact your mindset. Mindset is everything. Expectations aren't going to help us. Mindset will help us be present. Now, how do we change mindset? Well, that's a whole big concept. Here's one and the very first rule that I'm going to give you. Here it is. Breathe. Learn to breathe. Many of you have heard me talk about this. I learned appropriate breathing techniques when I took a course in mindfulness many, many years ago to reduce my stress. Now, I failed the course on mindfulness, which is kind of stressful when you think you failed the course on stress reduction. That's another story. But what I did learn was to breathe. So if I ask you all right now, take three deep cleansing breaths. If you all take a couple of breaths, what happens? Your mind clears, you relax, you feel your shoulders go down, and most importantly, you're ready to listen. You see, if you go into something and you're all hyped up, and I am, I am guilty of this all the time, you're going you're gonna to be challenged being present because your listening channels will be closed down. We're going to talk more about that in a second. Breathing is a surefire, no-miss way to recenter yourself, get a little more present, opening up those listen channels. Because when your listening channels are open, the people that you're speaking with will sense it. That's presence. You see, there's things happening that you can't speak to, and there's things happening that you can control. This all impacts your ability to keep those relationships. So breathing, real simple, three in and out breaths. The next rule is step away from the email. I find that what's happening is I've gotten more email than I used to, and most of it is the same thing. It's wash my hands and don't do this and don't do that. You know what? I think people are tuning out of email a little bit. What's crazy is I'm actually gonna say, try to stay away from conference calls as well. Do video. You see, face-to-face -face makes things infinitely more meaningful. If you can, insist or ask for video. If you're presenting a proposal or you're presenting an important document to your client, to your customer, to your franchisee, whoever it might be, arrange a time to go through it together on video. That's what I've been doing and it makes a huge, huge difference. You can see reaction, you can see people's faces, you can see how they're feeling about it. Look, you're all adults, you don't need me to teach you about this sort of thing, uh, you know, that, it's, that we want to see how people are reacting. Here's the quest, here's the point. Don't be complacent and just resort to email. Face-to-face -face is meaningful, it counts, and right now it matters more than ever. The second rule is stop multitasking. Stop it. Now, I know it's easier said than done, but guess what? If, as I'm speaking to you right now, if I were to make a slight glance to my left, which is actually where my cell phone is sitting, you're going to notice it and you're going to get the impression in a minute that I've tuned out on you for a moment. 
multitasking corrodes relationships. You have a limited window, it's a high pressure window, and the onus is on us to make sure that when we're giving these presentations, you know where the camera is on your computer. You know where things are in your office. You're aware of your physical environment. There's nothing to distract you. There's nothing to get in your way. Folks, this is no different than if you're sitting face to face with somebody. If you're sitting face to face with a customer or a prospect or a colleague, would you stop and look at your phone or your watch? Far too many people still do. You can't do it here either. Multitasking corrodes relationships because people are really smart. And if you click out, click out, click away for a second, they'll know it. And then part of them shuts down as well. Don't bet against me on this point. Number three, decide how you want to show up. Listen, this is really important. You don't get to show up any different than as if you were showing up at the office. The impression that you make still matters whether you're here or there or wherever. Every single morning I get up like I'm going to work. I usually shave. I put on clothes. Today I'm wearing something that actually has my insignia on it. See, it says Todd Cohen. Everyone's in sales because it was a gift from somebody. And I thought, you know what? This is how I want to show up. People make buying decisions before you ever say a word. If you're using video, which I strongly recommend, and you heard me say that, how do you want to be seen? Because people make that buying decision in a split second. And I, and I just want to share with you, I got to tell you, people do not, people do not, do not, do not want to see your fuzzy slippers. I got news for you. Unless it's like with a friend or something, at the end of the day, this is losing its its humor to me, right? I If, if I get on the phone with somebody and or in video, and I could tell they haven't prepared or they haven't taken care of themselves. And and they, and, you know, the the, you know, the sense I get is, hey, this is okay. I I get a pass this time. No, you don't. You don't get a pass because when you're able to get together live again, I'm going to remember the person who took the time to put themselves together on video. Folks, it may sound simple. It may say, you may be rolling your eyes and saying, yeah, I needed to tune in to hear this. Yes, you did because it's too easy to get lazy. We have to work 300% at being present. These all impact the customer's decision to do business with you. Number four, eye contact means you're listening and engaged. That is not me who's come up with that. That's been known for years and years and years. There's, there's billions and billions of words of psychological re research and sociological research on this. But if you notice the way I'm doing this right now, those of you who can see me, I'm looking right at the camera on my computer. I want you to know that if I could see you, I would be making eye contact with you. Folks, this is critical. Eye contact is a guaranteed lock that you were listening. If people get the sense because you're multitasking or you didn't show up right or you don't want to use the, the video or whatever it might be, you're going to send people the message that somehow you get a pass. You don't get a pass. None of us do. The people who did not skip a beat and treated this no differently than if this were not COVID-19 will be the people who will be remembered. This is you being present. This is your mindset saying there is no difference here. This is your mindset saying when I show up, when I am on that video, when I'm on that conversation, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure that they know that I'm tuned into them. It's not about you, it's about them. So let's try a, let's, let's try a little quiz question, although I'm not sure if how, how this may or may not work, but uh, I'm just gonna send this out. Presence can be more effectively maintained, one, in person, two, electronically, three, both, four, neither. So take a quick second and just somewhere write down your answer. And the answer, well, I'll, I'll give you a couple seconds, but I think this is a pretty easy question, all right? So presence can be more effectively maintained both in person and electronically. In person, it's one thing. Electronically, as we're doing this, needs to be, well, we have to work a little harder at it. All the things I'm sharing with you will have a direct line to profits because what you're doing is you're making yourself memorable. You're making yourself stand out and people will say, you know what? She took the time 
to put herself together. He took the time to shave. He took the time to put on clothes that say his company logo on it. He's sitting in a way that's comfortable. He's created a, a background or whatever, whatever it might be. I remember that person. Everybody else just said, yeah, drop me an email or, you know, we'll just talk on the phone. Talking on the phone isn't bad. It's a step up from email, but presence is all about this, folks. Presence is all about this. And if you do default to the phone, these same things matter because it, it directs our mindset. It influences our mindset and how we feel on that call. This, the next one, the next rule of staying present is something that a lot of people forget use names. So I know Luke Baisley is out there. I know Brian Baisley is out there. David Drucker just introduced me. I know Lou and Sherry are on the line and, and Lynn Lobo and, and all kinds of wonderful people. Some, of I, some I've met and some I haven't met. If I just mentioned your name, what happened? You snapped up a little bit. You listened a little closer. You became a little more present. And what I said to you indirectly is, I'm with you. I know you're here. I'm engaged with you. You see, names have the same impact as breathing. When you breathe, you open up those listening channels. When you call somebody out by name, you scream that you're present, that you are focused on them. Remember, it's not about you. It's about them. People have a name. Use it you will be remembered. We all know what it feels like when we hear it. When someone says to me, Todd versus now in Philadelphia, <clears throat> we have a unique nickname here. It goes by Yo after Rocky. Well, I don't like being called Yo. I have a name. It's Todd. And when people say, hi, Todd, or good morning, Todd, or I see an email that says, dear Todd, and maybe my name in the body of the email one more time, you know what? It's got my attention. It tells me somebody took the time and the care to show me that they're present. Ask questions throughout. Ask questions. Don't ramble and don't drone on. You know what happens in these sort of situations is people get nervous and they just keep talking and talking and talking and talking and there's no ill intent there. There's no ill will there. It's just people get nervous because we're afraid of silence. Silence is a good thing. I teach a speaking clinic, and, it's, and one of the things I teach is the power of the pause, not P-A-W-S like my little Luna, but P-A-U-S-E, the power of the pause. You see, if you stop talking for a moment, people actually snap back to attention because after a couple of seconds, they'll go, where's that voice? Ask questions. So if I could see you all, and we were having more of a, a bisynchronous experience here, I would call you out. I would say, David, what's resonating with you so far? Or Luke, how are you doing? What's, you know, do you have any questions? Or I would, I would do different things that would demonstrate that I'm here and that the only thing going on in my world right now is you. That's what we want to prove to people. The only thing happening at that moment in the entire world is me being present with you. If you want to be remembered when this is over, try that mindset on for size. I guarantee you, your relationships will be infinitely more robust. And that is not a hard guarantee to make. You see, when you ask questions, you interrupt yourself, you ask people to comment, you increase your odds of engagement and differentiation. Ask people to write things down. You know, these sorts of experiences, as I said earlier, it's really easy to multitask and sort of be there and not be there. How do you feel when somebody's only paying 50% attention to you? How do you feel when you've spent an enormous amount of time preparing something for somebody and they don't even pay attention? This is why video is important. This is why breathing is important. This is why making sure your listening channels are important people to write things down. You've already noticed I've I've asked you throughout this. Listen, I would write this down. Please write this one down. And you know what's interesting is I always sometimes say if you get nothing else from this, which is always a great line because people go, "Okay, I just want to get that one nugget that matters so I can, you know, go back to doing my emails." No. It gets people actually back on your side, back on side with you. So if I ask you to write things down, 
I'm asking, I'm saying to you, this is important. And this is a point I'd like you to take away. So what I'd like you to do is write this down, to write things down. See that? To play on words. Okay. Now, as we, as we continue down this journey together, let's do a second quiz question. Using somebody's blank screams you are present. So I'm asking the, I'm asking the group, is it rank, title, company name, or name? Well, hopefully you've been paying attention because the answer is, drum. I don't have a drum roll, sorry. I wanted a drum roll, I couldn't figure it out, is name. So, use people's names. Meredith, thank you for setting this up for me. Lou, I enjoy your LinkedIn posts immensely. I can't tell you how much I appreciate what you do. Sherry, your comments about my keynote a couple of years ago have had me smiling for days. Lynn, thank you for being so patient with me while we navigated this WebEx stuff. I could go on and on and on. Folks, names scream presence and it screams engagement. If I hear my name, I'm going to buy from you. So this one is exceptionally important. And I, I, I say this and I even get a little lump in my throat when I think about this. This is an extraordinary time for lots of reasons. But this is also the perfect time, ladies and gentlemen, to work on our humility, our vulnerability, and our ability to acknowledge. You know, everybody I've spoken to, everybody I've spoken to, everybody has said to me, I just need somebody to listen to me. I just need somebody who gets what I'm going through. Timing is everything, ladies and gentlemen. If you wanna be present with somebody, show them that you understand them. That begins with acknowledging. That begins with being vulnerable and saying, I'm dealing with the same issues. Be humble. Humility, vulnerability, and your ability to acknowledge what's going on in people's lives, well, we know the impact on that. It deepens relationships. It makes them remember you. Don't go into every conversation and listen to what I'm about to say, and I want you to write this down. Don't go into every conversation thinking you have to come out with an order or a sale. Go into every conversation knowing that everything you do is selling. That's why I always say everyone's in sales and every conversation is a selling moment. This past Monday, I was on a call with six other fellow speakers. And we've all experienced the same complete and utter evaporation of our businesses. It was the first time that I was really able to talk with people who understood my world. I got a big lump in my throat when someone, when one of my friends just said to me, there's nothing I can say other than the fact that I acknowledge what's going on and I'm in the same boat. Literally almost brought me to tears. Something as simple as somebody identifying with my plight. That's what people want. That's what will make you memorable. Somebody, somebody two days ago said to me, when is the right time to start selling? I just put a video up on LinkedIn a couple of hours ago. You know when the right time to start selling is? There is no answer. Everything you're doing is selling. I should say there's only one answer. And every single time you show your humanity and your vulnerability and your ability to acknowledge you give people your best self, and that you cannot put a price tag on. Friends, I will do business with those people all day long. The next way to make sure that we stay present and be present and be present, stay present, 
is not to become what I call the sales apologist. In my second book, which is called Stop Selling, excuse me, Stop Apologizing and Start Selling, it's not sales training. It's about how we all miss the opportunity to advance what it is we need to do because of the stereotype of selling, because of the negative images and our fear of asking. If you have done everything right, you've earned the right to ask. And maybe that ask isn't for the contract or for a piece of business. Maybe it's just, let's, let's put a cup of coffee on the calendar for when this is over. Can I put a follow-up date on the calendar? Can I send you something? You see, if you end a conversation without an ask, you've abdicated the moment to move that relationship forward. Write this down. Don't abdicate the moment. Because once you do that, you can't get it back. So what does abdicate the moment sound like? Shoot me some dates. I'll have my person call your person. You know what, drop me an email and, and, and we'll figure it out. Or, you know what, here's the information, let me know what you think. All four of those statements leave the person you're speaking with no obligation to follow through. Not one single thread of commitment is there. Here's the proposal. Listen, I wanna get back to you April 4th at, well, that's past, but at three o'clock. Does that work for you? Great, let's schedule it. We're gonna do a video call because you're the only person I'm going to be speaking to at that time. This has worked 100% for me and it will work for you as well. If you are ending your conversations without an ask, you are making your job harder. And the ask doesn't have to be for business because whatever you ask for is moving the relationship forward. You're being present. You're not abdicating that moment. And guess what? You'll get the business because when this is over, People will remember you for being consistent and present. And then folks, rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Steps one through eight, one through eight, one through eight. Hey, you can go out of order a little bit if you want. I won't tell. They're all the right thing to do. And they all can be interchangeable. They're not necessarily in order, but don't skip any of them. If you do, you're going to pay the price. I guarantee it. If you don't skip them, watch what happens. Your relationships will blossom. And I can hear Kirk out there going, yup, yup, he knows it. Kirk, I know you're out there and I know that you get what I'm saying. Let's do our third quiz question. Eye contact means you are intense. I've been accused of that a few times. You are listening. You, are ha you have an astigmatism and probably should see the eye doctor. <laughs> Sorry, I, that's not the right answer. I just cracked up when I said it. Like to intimidate people into doing it your way. The answer, as you should know by now, is eye contact means you're listening. So I hope you can all see that I'm making eye contact with every single one of you. I am. I can see you. I can see you. Okay, as we begin to wrap up here, a few more quick points. There is no secret sauce to sales. In fact, everything I'm telling you is the secret sauce. Now, let me put this into another form for you that will help you remember to practice this with every single interaction, because as you know, it even says it on my shirt. See, it says it right there. Everyone's in sales. Every conversation is a selling moment. Every single interaction leaves a mark, and that mark drives the relationship. What's the image you want to lay down? There is no secret sauce to this, folks. Do not look for some secret, because it's right in front of you. It's called ELSA. I think I spoke about this, in fact, I'm sure I did, at the, CF, at the uh, uh, CFA convention a couple of years ago, and I know I spoke about it at the UPS convention when I keynoted there the first time, a couple of years back, but this is a great, and this is a great time to review ELSA. These four steps guarantee that you're moving relationships forward. They guarantee that you're present. They guarantee that you're going to be differentiated. They guarantee that people will remember you. That's a lot of guarantees, huh? It's a good thing I didn't put it in writing. Okay, so here we go. The E is for engage. This is the opposite of complacency. Every single time you engage, this is engagement. An email is engagement. A phone call is engagement. You know, putting your head out the window and screaming, I need this to end. That's an engagement. Different kind of engagement. The guys with the nets might come, but you get my point. 
you must engage during this time. This is where we have to fight complacency. This is where we have to make sure we don't, don't forget that our relationships do not have the responsibility to remember us. Then when you're engaging, make sure your only job is listening. How do you people know you're listening? Eye contact. How do you know if you have eye contact? Video. And if you don't have video, this is the way you do it. All the other tips I've given you, ask questions, use their name, ask people to write things down, ask for feedback, the power of the P-A-U-S-E, the power of the pause. Guarantee, folks, this will make a difference. Number three, the S, you know what this is. I can see you're all out there going, I know what this one, I know this one. Ready? Here it comes. Suggest. At the end of a conversation or during a conversation, if you think that there's something that you can do to help the client, speak up. It's not a state secret. Don't keep it to yourself. Educate them change the way they think influence them in your direction i'm looking for help right now i'm looking for help and doing all sorts of things guess what i don't know what i don't know i'm waiting for suggestions because when i hear a suggestion and it makes sense guess what the a stands for you know i know you know ask if you've earned the right to ask ask don't ever abdicate the moment you heard me say that don't abdicate the moment because if you abdicate the moment because you didn't ask, shame on you. Nothing I can do to help you. You missed the point. Don't assume that they're just going to give you the business. You must practice ELSA every day. Engage, listen, suggest, and ask. Engage, listen, suggest, and ask. We're not done. We're not quite done yet, folks. We're almost there. Here's some market-facing things that you can do right now. Just some ideas that I picked up from my clients and some things that I'm doing. Start a virtual study club, pick a book, talk to your clients and get together once a week and have a book club, talk, pick a book. I, I know a great book called Everyone's in Sales, but you know, whatever. You might be the only ones who have ever actually read it. There's a million good books out there. One of my clients right now is reading Malcolm Gladwell's Blink because I think that is an enormous book. I'll tell you one of my favorite books. If you want to practice presence and it's a heavy book, it's called Emotional Intelligence. I'm sure many of you heard about it. It was written over 40 years ago by Dr. Daniel Goleman. That's G-O-L-E-M-A-N. Go to Amazon and buy it. That book will change your life. It did mine. Another thing is update client lists. This should be a no-brainer, folks, but that's all I've been doing is updating and cleaning my client list. Number three, update LinkedIn, participate in conversations. Lou, you are the rock star. You are the benchmark. You are the guy. You should be giving a class on how to engage on LinkedIn. And finally, everybody out there needs a recommendation. Is there a recommendation that you have been putting off writing for somebody? Don't wait to be asked again. Surprise somebody with it. I've been writing three recommendations a week. And I got to tell you, what it's, what's happened has created some amazing conversation. These are, rec these are recommendations on LinkedIn that I just have been putting off. Shame on me. Now I'm more present because it shows I'm thinking about them. Number four, call everyone you haven't talked to. Pick up the phone and call them. What are you waiting for? Stay away from the email. Elsa, engage, listen, suggest, and ask. Call them. People are actually answering the phones right now. It's kind of crazy, but they are. Remember the days when people talked on phones? They're talking on the phones again. Next one, unleash your creative side. What marketing activity can you be doing? I know the Baisleys are ripping this one up over a driver's seat, and I'm sure you're all doing great things. Now, and I'm gonna talk with you a little bit more about that in a second. Working on your professional development. Listen, folks, what a great time to take a course, the virtual study club, do something online, fire up those neurons again. When you're, when you're intellectually stimulated, you know what, you fire up your clients. I love it when somebody says, man, I just learned something, I gotta tell you about it. Even if I don't understand it, which is just pretty much about everything, I still want to hear about it, and it, it's engaging. It's Elsa all over again. Okay, now here's Baisley's laws. I, I have this, you know, Luke shared this. Luke and Brian shared this with me the other day, and I just love this. So I want to give them a shout out because you know what? They're they're way out in front of this stuff. So number one, take care of yourself physically and mentally. You have to be in top form, whatever that means to you. I'm actually working out. I mean, pretty amazing. I. I I mean, I can barely stand right now, but I'm working out. Take care of revenue today. Pivot to help and drive new revenue streams. Look for ways to keep helping your clients. Number three, 
focus six to eight hours a day on post-COVID-19. That's the one that got my attention post COVID-19. We can't change today, folks, but everything I'm sharing with you right now sets the stage for a month or two, and I'm optimistic. Two months down the road, but I'm not a doctor. Hey, what do I know? But I'm optimistic this is going to end, and um, I, I just, I, if I'm not optimistic, I, I, will, I will lose my mind. And uh, listen, uh, and I, I had to put this one on there as well, because uh, you heard me say that in Elsa. Listen, listen, listen. And I love the fact that uh, the Baisley boys, sorry guys, I called you the boys. Every franchise is dealing with their own demon stresses, personal, personal financial situation and fears. One size does not fit all. Listen folks, humility, vulnerability and acknowledgement. Shut up and listen and just be there. They will remember you. I guarantee it. So thanks to the Baisleys for letting me uh, share that with everybody. Listen, now is not the time to stop employee education and training. What are you doing? Don't cut that from your budget. Yes, I have self-interest in this point. That's not the point. I want you to think about this. I, 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 I want you to think about something. Why would you be cutting training when that's exactly what we need to do to retain people when this is over? Why would you be cutting the ability for people to go out and write business or be better at what they're doing when that's exactly what we're going to have to do is recovering sales? It's time to leverage everyone in the client experience. I call that a sales culture. All you have to do is remember this. Write this down. Everyone's in sales. Everybody in your company does something that impacts the customer's decision to say yes. I'm going to say that again. Everybody in your company impacts the customer's decision to say yes. If anybody in your organization ever says, I'm just the, you stop them and you say no. You are a part of this organization. What you do matters. And this is how when you do what you do, it influences a customer's decision to say yes. You see how passionate I am on this point? This makes me crazy when people feel like they're siloed. Final point, let your customers inspire you. Let your customers inspire you. I want to give you a real life example of the way a customer has inspired me. One of my clients called me up and said, Todd, I need what you do because I'm not worried about COVID-19. I know how to handle that. I need to be worried about recovering sales when this is over, and I think you can help us. Well, that was like, that spurred a three-hour conversation with this person and opened up an entirely new concept for me about how I can help people get through this. It's like Brian Baisley said when I shared Baisley's laws, post-COVID-19. So that inspired, for example, this particular advertisement that I'm doing for that I'm doing by snail mail. I'm actually mailing these out. Recovering lost selling time will be crucial. So invest in your team, blah, blah, blah. You can read it. I do want to give a shout out that the UPS stores in both the US and Canada have printed these for me. Just saying, great job if you could see and touch this thing. It's, a, it's awesome. Remember this, being present and staying present is something we have to work infinitely harder at now than we ever have before if we're going to remain memorable when this is over. Thanks for listening. For more franchising resources, including how-to articles, expert advice, franchisee success stories, and franchise opportunities, visit franchisecanada.online. You can also learn more about franchising at cfa.ca and can connect with specific franchise opportunities at lookforafranchise.ca.